What's up, YouTube? Today, we're going to be covering a groundbreaking new feature inside of 3ds Max using Typeflow. Up until now, if you wanted to make high-quality terrains or landscapes for your games or movies, you'd pretty much have to use a third-party software. Well, all of that's changed now that Typeflow has integrated terrain generation inside of 3ds Max. I'm going to put a download link to the free version of Typeflow in the description down below, but until you click that, Make sure to stick around and see how insane these features really are. All right, let's get started. I'm going to clear our scene here and I'm going to walk you through a process on how I would use this tool to create landscapes for my game. I'm going to delete this. Once you have Typeflow installed, you can go over here to Object Type and you're going to put a Typeflow in the scene. I'm going to go over to Modifier and hit Open Editor. Now, this editor here has a whole bunch of different operators and the ones that you're going to want are on the far right and they're brown toned. To get started, you're going to use a birth terrain, and that's going to draw the landscape height field right here in the uh, center of your scene at the origin. And hit G to get rid of that grid. And it, just like any other terrain generating system, uh, it's heavily based on noises and being able to manipulate those noises. So if we look at our birth terrain here, we have a resolution and our scale. And the way this works is the resolution is going to be the, the overall detail uh, sampling of our height field and the scale is gonna to correlate to the size. So if we were to uh, go to customize unit setup and change this to metric, hit okay. May have to close this and reopen to see if it updates. So you can see that the landscape itself is six meters. So you might be thinking that's kind of small and it is, but with the way the erosion operator works, uh, it seems to work more effectively at the scale and we can easily scale up our terrain and uh, keep everything within scale uh, later on in the process. So. We have our terrain here. Let's go ahead and get started with a terrain noise. You can see right away that it already started giving us some really interesting shapes. So this is uh, really powerful because it allows you to experiment and work at a very fast pace. So we're getting extremely quick updates to our scene. You can change the seed value of your noise. You can change between different presets to get started, such as canyons different dirt that maybe you could even export out for nanite meshes, right? Uh, another good one would be like gravel. Then we could play with the scale of this, create something really interesting for our uh, terrains inside of Unreal, right? So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and go back to Bumpy and let's increase the strength of this. We'll go ahead and drop this down a little bit, change the seed, increase the scale even further, and something like that is pretty cool to get it started. Well, it might not look perfect yet, but that's okay because we've barely added anything else to the terrain. So the way these trains work, they have operations, and that's how they're going to stack between each other uh, in this uh, event stack right here, right? So right now we're adding noise, but we can add another terrain noise. And instead of add it, we can do maximum, and we'll lower this, and you can see that it's preserving both terrains. And it's blending how you would expect the maximum to work. So the, the values are um, staying consistent. Where the new noise uh, ends up having a higher value, it could eventually end up overtaking the other noise completely. So this is a good way to add some, like, maybe some dirt down or, like, rougher terrain on the bottom end of our landscape. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And after that, let's go ahead and check out the terrain erosion. We're going to drop that underneath the terrain noise, and you can see already it started eroding at our landscape. And just like the noises, there's also presets uh, for your erosion as well. And this is really powerful. I'm a big fan of the ancient runoff. You can see that it instantly breaks up our terrain and adds a lot of different potential uh, to experiment around. And it just as fast as the terrain noise worked, the terrain erosion is extremely quick as well. You can increase the strength of that, see how that's looking, evaporation rate, make it a little bit smoother, lower the gravity as well. And notice that increasing the decay can give you some pretty interesting results get started here very cool now something that i like to do to keep everything within scale when i'm working is i will use the wall worm point entity to drop a counter terrorist in here so info player counter terrorist so this is how big a typical player would be right and obviously this landscape is not nearly big enough but we can get an idea by scaling this guy down to what a player would be at this landscape size and then we could reverse that process with the landscape later and that's a really good way to keep landscape uh, scale in mind when working. I'll make this guy even smaller, maybe something around that size. So that really gives you a better feel on how vast this landscape actually is, right? So I'll keep them selected for the moment, that way you can uh, keep an eye on them. So after we have our terrain erosion, 
we could even put another terrain inversion on top of that or something really cool is the terrain fx and this is another way to add some uh preset detail to your terrain so right now it is on rugged and so there's different modes and each mode also has uh different presets as well so let's go ahead and go to let's try ridges and then what you can do is if you decrease the strength it pretty much just goes back into how the default layer was before you added this so it's like a blend between the two and you can fine tune that and that's pretty insane so we can fine tune that to get that to where we would want that to be and actually let's move this back over here okay so let's find a setting that works for what we're trying to accomplish here and then afterward let's up the samples we can put another terrain erosion on top of that perfect and then we can even lower that amount we can increase the evaporation rate the way it makes it more subtle and it's just a little bit extra detail and you can toggle these on and off experiment right so another really powerful node that's similar to the way curve editing works in a lot of other softwares like Gaia and Houdini would be using the terrain filter we're going to drop that underneath and the terrain filter has a lot of different modes like blurring, clamping values, denoising, everything that you would expect. What I really like to use it for is reshaping. So this is a curve of zero to one, how you would expect your grayscale values to work, but you can manipulate these by increasing the values in certain uh, grayscale ranges to manipulate the landscape. So for example, if I wanted to more cap off this top area, find a value that's around that area, and I would create a ridge, I would just raise it up. You can see that we have like this capped off area, which we can put like a stronghold, a castle, any kind of uh, point of interest that you might want to incorporate. You can also shrink this value to where it's less. That just helps you kind of pre-plan or manipulate data. You can do the same thing with the bottom of the grass. Do corners, that way it's a little bit sharper for what I'm trying to do. We start getting those funky values, just make sure, make sure to normalize it, fix it. Pretty cool stuff. Being able to man uh, manipulate the terrain, control the flow a little bit better. All right, from here, well, what would be really cool to talk about is the fact that you can project objects into the terrain and use that to manipulate the height field as well. And this is really important for like, say you wanted to establish, uh, you know, we were talking about putting a castle or a stronghold here. Well, maybe you wanted an area to specifically fit where you were putting that castle, make uh, foundations for what you were doing. So let's say we had this on the edge of this hill here and we went to object to terrain. We're actually going to go ahead and put this um, after the erosions, but before the ridges. Then we're going to add selected, and we're going to hide that cylinder. You can see that this is where we put that platform. Okay. And uh, so we have maximum. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to increase the size of this a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to enable fall off, make it a little bit smoother and shrink it back down a little bit. So let's edit that fall off a little bit and lower the distance. But now we have this foundation that can be moved around and even set up procedurally to be placed wherever that castle is going to be. And the terrain is going to fit it no matter what. So the terrain itself can be procedural. So like the whole stack. So we went up to our first noise and just changed the seed. Watch this. Boom, only landscape, foundation staying right there. This is ridiculous. Right, you can set up your whole game world or or movies, VFX, procedurally, and still maintain continuity. Right, so you can make a world that's like eighty percent procedural, but then that last twenty percent has like this flow, maybe like a quest line or a lore, um, just like your your game meta, right, your gameplay loop that's established already. But the rest of the world is generated each time you play, kind of like a Diablo game. Or maybe you don't want it to be quite as procedural, but uh, throwing in elements that do change up the gameplay or add a variety for different players and experiences, right? It's pretty cool. And then we can also raise this up. It's also how you can make some mountains or hills, but I'll show you a really cool way to make some mountains here in a minute. But that is uh, another method, right? So we have that. Let's go ahead and show some of the uh, really cool preset colors you can do to your terrain to kind of like a brainstorm. I, I would use it more for concepting and R&D to get started. Because uh, you might have auto, like auto materials and master materials already made inside of Unreal or Max. Uh, but this is still really cool. And you could uh, utilize them still if you want to. So let's go to our preset colors. And let's just do Autumn Goalie. whole bunch of really awesome colors from the get-go, right? Like, it saves you so much time. You can experiment and find the color and vibe of what you're going for so fast here. 
and you can blend color types, right? So we have our, our color blending here, but we're, you know, we could throw another one underneath or manipulate these colors, but let's throw another one underneath. So I'm going to say it's really dark here, but if you go up to your interpolation and go to value, this is basically a zero to one. You can just drag it down. It's not as intense. Maybe you don't want to multiply. You could always change it to, to maybe you're adding color to it. Which that can give it more of that dusty feel for us, right? You can add other parameters too. Like we can do it by slope. Now you can see it's really just adding the, the dust to the slopes. That's pretty cool. Um, so you have a lot of control over these presets to really get going and experiment with what's going to feel good for the, the landscape that you're creating. We could go down here too and we can see that this is the, the sandy color that we're getting. Um, so we can edit this. But you can see that you can adjust these things. So if we went back to like the, the first terrain color and we clicked one of these, um, there's color correction as well. So find the values you want to adjust, tweak those too, or set your own. So they, this is just a value that's grass that has this color. You can make your own. But it's a great way to get started and it's super powerful. So that's really cool. Now next, uh, tiled landscapes is something that's really powerful. And this is, I'll, sh I'll show you two things that demonstrate another reason why this is so insane. So chances are you've been working in a uh, landscape software such as like Gaia or who, uh, not so much Houdini, but like Gaia is super awesome. But it, there comes a point when you're working and you establish your landscape, but you really would like to see how it continued out further. But if you're doing like tile generation and all that, like it's it's really the the same noise reprojected. So first you could start by just increasing the scale. Let's just increase the scale to 10. Okay, so everything just expanded out and it continued the, the procedural noise. You can grow your landscape and see how it's gonna react, right? So like, and we still have our player hidden in here somewhere, hiding too. Like, we, you know, let's go ahead and keep this at 10. Is creating your own tiled landscapes is super seamless. So there's a few ways to go about this. So like, let's just say we copied this whole graph and we pasted it. So it's, it's, it's in the exact same spot with the same parameters so you can't see any difference yet. But remember our scale is 10 meters, which means let's just make a terrain that's offset by 10 meters in the X. So now that's where this terrain is, okay? The way the colors are interacting, you can see that it's affected things a little bit differently. You see something. Okay, so look into that. So there's this gap between the terrains. They're not, they're not blending. So the first thing you can do, and there's a few ways to resolve it depending on what you need. If you go to terrain tile, you're going to drag the end stack of each event into this. So it's going to make a copy out, copy out, and then the operation or the mode. You can start with blend adjacent tile scenes. And this does a pretty good job. Okay, so we want this to feel a little bit more seamless. Let's just start with a new terrain color. Perfect. Okay. So there's a little bit of a scene here. And there's a few ways we could address this. So the way I showed you is just a real simple way to do it. There's another way to resolve this as well. So what you would do in that case is we're going to make another duplicate. Let's copy this, paste it. So we're going to end up using two different tile blends, right? So the first way you would address it is by doing a, uh, a tile blend before all of your effects. We're going to put our copy out before all of that. Okay. And the way it's going to blend is we're actually going to do advanced overlap blending and it's going to be prepare. So it's going to prepare these tiles to blend together. Okay. And then so we're going to take all of these. I copy them. We're going to paste them underneath. Okay. So let's go to our color, make sure that's down here. So it's preparing the landscape. You can still see the scene. Now if we do another terrain tile after all of that, and we do advanced overlap blending, and this time we shrink them. So it's still there to a degree, really close. Uh, it's really not that evident. So if you needed to fine tune it a little bit more, you'd probably be doing that by just like running like a quick like smooth or your auto material that you have set up is actually going to hide that anyways. So that's a pretty fast way to just resolve your blending. Uh, this way takes a moment longer, but basically you establish the, 
the stack and the aesthetic that you want. You blend them initially, and then you uh, shrink them back down with the blend after the stack of the effects. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create the terrain tile that has the mountain. We have a terrain copy out at the end of this initial blend. And what we're going to go ahead and do is take a, another birth terrain. So we know that this was 10 meters in scale. And we're going to offset this by 10 in the Y. So, and we could even if we wanted to with the initial height, get it a little bit closer. Probably not necessary. So now that we have that, what you can use is a terrain slope. This is a great way to get like a, a big mountainous shape. Experiment around with that a little bit. But then once you have your uh, your terrain slope down, we're going to go ahead and add a noise to this. So terrain noise. It's going to preserve that shape pretty well. We're going to increase the scale, also the strength. We're going to take a terrain tile now. Again, we have that terrain tile starting right there. And we're going to see if we can just simply blend adjacent scenes right where we are. You can see that we can have different parameters set up with our terrain tiles and it works really well. So what I would do just to be safe is we'll take a terrain color and we'll put a new one down afterward. That way it's a little bit more consistent and we'll go back to Frigid Crags and see how this looked. Ta da Look at that. So uh, sometimes I would avoid copying and pasting previous parameters uh, just to be safe the way it's to make sure it's working a little bit more as expected. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of really quick uh, exploration and scene development that we can go through at a, a very rapid pace. If we were to go back, we, you know, we could still experiment with our landscape uh, noise of this, right? Just changing the seed even to see if something else fits it a little bit better. Going to both, we want this to be a little bit more extreme. Go back down to our tile blend and everything is preserved. A few more ways to uh, manipulate your terrains as well. For example, uh, terrain warp. I would usually use this earlier on in the graph, but just for experimentation, I'll throw it right here. It's a quick way to break up uh, a lot of your terrain. Uh, as you can see, it's like super interesting right now. Like this could easily be an open world, 100%. Again, keep scale in mind, bring this guy down to what he's actually gonna be and plop him over here. We still have our procedural mountain. It got warped because we threw the warp in afterward and it's this bit way smaller. So like, this is like how big somebody would be. You know, you could, this is a whole open world. So we're creating mountains dynamically. We're creating parts of landscapes that are fitting custom meshes dynamically. It can all be randomized super fast. It's all seed value. You have control over everything. Super, super powerful. And also you get to look dev and test different colors and uh, flows and everything. Yeah, so you can export the color as well. So this could just be your splat map that you're, you're using virtual textures on and pulling this color into like different like vegetation and grass and all that too. Uh, Super cool stuff, super powerful. And if you want to know how to export, so like once you have everything set up the way you want, you can drop your export here. And if you want to see where it's going to go, you just hit these dots for the base export file. It's going to show the uh, where it's at on your computer. Da -da 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 -da. And um, you can see how you're exporting. And now if you're going to be exporting to Unreal for your height map, I would choose PNG. The XR is not going to work for your height field coming in. Technically, you could also export this as a mesh. Um, you could be doing like a whole bunch of uh, just create a custom nanite. Uh, also, nanite landscape is in experimental phase. I know that 5.2 is going to be showcased, I believe, at GDC, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, you can resample for more resolution right here as well. Uh, resize grids, this only affects the birth terrain, so you have to make sure you have uh, birth terrain going on for your events for that to work. But lastly, before you export, let me show you what I was talking about for scale. So, simply put, we're going to use a terrain transform. And we're going to multiply this. So like, let's see what, how big our person was. Whoa, where'd he go? I think he went on a quest. Uh, let's just say we're going to multiply this, right? So let's just multiply this by 10,000. So it looks funky because everything's stacked on top of each other when it transformed. So to fix that, to preserve where they are, just click effect position and it will preserve where they were. So now if we were to drop a player in here again, that's the actual scale. Let's see how close we were. Might be a little off still. Oh, nope, so if we zoom in and we raise this guy up, you can see that, so this is the actual player scale and it's pretty awesome, right? Like, uh, pretty close. You could experiment around, maybe dial it in and you can always rescale in uh, Unreal, super easy. So, but uh, yeah, there's also some scatter parameters and things like that, but that's pretty much the gist of it. You can 
create whole large open worlds now inside of 3ds max there's not really a need for other landscape systems obviously if you have pipelines built around them like specifically houdini i could definitely see leveraging that especially because there's some really cool like tools you could build for that as well so i don't see that going anywhere at least at the moment because there's a uh, too much tool potential for artists to leverage Houdini as well, but you could use this and create HDAs still and combine them and do both because you can also use HDAs inside of Max. So that's just food for thought. Uh, I hope you guys really appreciated this video. Um, I'm really excited about all this, as you could tell, and I wanted to, to share that potential with you guys. If you guys enjoyed content like this or made it this far in this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe and like button and comment and let me know what you guys want to learn next. Um, I'm really enjoying putting this kind of content out there for you guys. And helping me uh, grow the community is really also going to help me increase the the value and quality of the content that I can put out. Uh, and also along with the, the models and materials that I can upload to kingdomcrafter.com to better support the community. To, uh, that way we can all be uh, creative and collaborative together and explore all these new features together. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around and checking out my content. And I'm looking forward to our next video. See ya.